I'm going to show you guys what I eat in approximately three weeks on the carnivore diet. Most of the meat I got is from a local farm in Pennsylvania. I also stopped by Whole Foods to pick up some marrow bones just in case I did not have enough fat. And this is important as our indigenous ancestors, hunter-gatherers, used to consume about 80% of their calories from energy sources. What this means is that 80% of their calories came from a fat or a carbohydrate source. So in my case, since I have a higher amount of lean body mass, and especially people like Sean Baker, who have an unnatural amount of lean body mass, the fat to protein ratio changes slightly. And since I used to lift weights, I have maybe, I would say maybe 10 pounds of extra muscle on my frame. So my fat to protein ratio would be skewed a little bit more towards protein. But it's very important to keep in mind that in order to feel good, have optimal energy metabolism, we need to consume a high percentage of our calories from fat or carbohydrates. This ties into the carnivore diet in a difficult way because it can be very hard to actually get meat that is fatty enough to do 70 to 80% of your calories. And even if you do, since you're only eating several foods, the quality has to be incredibly high. And me, since I have allergies to foods like eggs and dairy, it's very, very difficult to procure pretty much high quality animal fat all the time. Fortunately, I am willing to go out of my way and spend a lot of time sourcing food. That's why we have some very beautiful grass-fed beef from a local farm today. So let's take a look at everything I have and let's talk about it. Here we have some grass-fed navel belly and navel belly is really just what bacon is made out of. And you guys can see the color on this. And if you smell this, it smells like a barnyard. It smells like a farm. And this is partially because the animals were being fed hay in the winter. And in the summer, this meat has more of a butterscotchy flavor. It's a bit sweeter and nuttier. In the winter, it has more of like a barnyardy flavor. But that's part of what I have. But the reason I'm showing this real quick initially is to talk about the conversion of nutrients in grass to the actual flesh of the animal. Grass has carotenoids and vitamin K1 that convert to retinol as well as vitamin K2 in the cow's flesh. These vitamins, vitamin A in the form of retinol and vitamin K2, in the form of MK4 and MK7 if it ferments slightly in animal foods are the most important vitamins in human health. These are fat-soluble vitamins. These are key to processes in the body like cell differentiation and gene expression, literally how every cell is regulated and made, vitamin A and D3 being the primary precursors, and all of the other vitamins that we're consuming in this meat are oriented around the metabolic processes associated with absorbing vitamins A and vitamins D3. In addition to those vitamins, grass-fed meat is much higher in vitamin E than grain-fed meat is, and also has better ratios of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. And Sean Baker recently did a video on does organ meats matter, does grass-fed matter, and I guarantee you the people in those studies or anyone comparing grass-fed to grain-fed meat did not have this meat because if they did, they would not be opening their mouth. This fat is so delicious. If you ever ate a grain fed steak again, you would spit it out of your mouth and go to a fish market or something because you would realize how terrible the conditions these animals are raised in and how it correlates directly to the quality of the meat. So if you guys want to see more about the nutrition profile of grain fed versus grass fed, uh, there, I do have another video on my channel, but let's take a look at everything else I have today and just go over what I spent. So that's the beef belly that I just showed you guys. Here is another bag of beef belly. This is some beef brisket. Here is some more beef brisket. You can really see that beautiful yellow color on the outside of the meat. I don't want to open this up. It's, it's cryovac, it's vacuum sealed. Uh, and I do have a beef tongue that I'm going to probably slow roast. Uh, maybe I'll try it raw, I don't know. And I went to Whole Foods, I bought some marrow bones. Uh, I realized I could get some grass with marrow bones there, so I decided to try them out. I haven't actually done this in a while, but what I did with the bone marrow was, I put it in a jar and I've been fermenting it. And what fermenting meat does is it increases the vitamin K2 content. And you might be like, Frank, why don't you just eat some cheese or some other fermented animal products? Yeah, I can, but as I said, I'm allergic to dairy. And every single indigenous group, every single hunter-gatherer group consumed large amounts of fermented animal foods. So there's definitely something to be said about the importance of vitamin K2 from fermented animal foods in the diet. And it's something that we are presently missing. And I'll show you guys this in my next day of eating video. So be sure to check that out. Uh, but I mean, that's, you know, this is pretty boring. I have, you know, 55 pounds combined of brisket, belly, 
and, and just meat. So that's all I'm really going to be eating. And since the meat is fatty, since I chose fatty cuts like belly and brisket, I don't really have to use too many other things like bone marrow. So Frank, how much did you spend on all this quality meat? It was just over $400. And for any of you guys who are on a very tight budget, uh, I can understand that, but you always have to ask yourself, is the reason you don't want to spend more money on food because you'd rather spend money on other things or because you actually genuinely can't afford it? If you genuinely can't afford it, I do have a video, Carnivore Diet on a Budget, where I pretty much buy ground beef and conventional eggs and then supplement a bunch of vitamins. But for me, spending five, $600 a month on food is not unreasonable. Most people spend about $70 to $80 per week on groceries, and if you account for the food that they eat out, they spend about $150 per week. So if I don't eat out, I actually spend the same amount of money per month on food as an average person. So if anyone wants to go out there and say that, I can't afford grass-fed, it's so much more expensive, you're not putting effort into your diet, you're not allocating money properly in your lifestyle, and I, I don't really know what to tell you guys. If you don't think grass-fed matters, if you don't think it's important, that's fine. So I will post a bunch of resources down in the comments below. There's websites like eatwild.com, localharvest.org. What you really want to do is search out as many local farmers as possible, see what their prices are, look for grass-fed beef, go for the off cuts, the fatty cuts, and you will save a lot of money. Animals don't store fat on their ribeye. Animals store fat on the brisket, in the marrow, on the belly. Animals store fat in these parts. That's why ribeyes and steak cuts tend to be expensive and then you also eat so much of them because they don't have enough fat to satiate your appetite. In a wild animal, they don't store fat on the rib section. It's a very unnatural thing to be consuming. So if you guys would like to see me try these foods out, definitely keep an eye on my channel. I will be doing some day of eating videos over the next week or two. Uh, I'm really excited to show you guys this stuff. If you guys are wondering, Frank, where are the organ meats? I'm waiting on getting some brain tissue from a local butcher for DHA. In regards to vitamin A retinol, I do have a cod liver oil supplement that I take in small amounts every single day. So although it's not part of this food haul, I do still have it presently in my diet. And I guess one last final thing to touch on is how every indigenous group prized these fatty parts of the animal. Check out the book, The Fat of the Land, and that will give you an incredible understanding of why I purchased these foods and really what foods you should be purchasing and looking out for on the carnivore diet. Every single hunter-gatherer group had such specific preferences on what parts of the animal they liked, and they tended to be fattier. The organs, the kidneys, all that type of stuff, they typically fed to children and developing and nursing women for the vitamin content. But reality is, high quality, grass-fed fat has all the vitamins you need. It is super calorie dense. It is super nutrient dense. It is delicious. If you can go out in nature and only eat one food and survive, it is a testament to the importance of this diet and how it really is the natural human diet. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe, like, and share the video. Uh, in the comments down below, I do have my Amazon shop where I have the salt that I use on this food. I have a bunch of seaweed products, things like that that I eat every day. There is my Patreon where I do have exclusive videos and I answer questions to my subscribers in depth. If you guys would like to see what hair pomade I use, what toothpaste I use, the deodorant I wear, I sell that stuff on my website, frank tofanocom Various hygiene products that are free of any negative chemicals with minimal ingredients. Last but not least, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. I post pictures of me shopping for this stuff all the time. On Twitter, I argue with other carnivore dieters. And if you guys would like to reach out to me, maybe you want help on food sourcing through a consultation, you can contact me through the form on my website or send me an email. Uh, outside of that, if you guys do have any questions, just leave them in the comments and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Good evening, Dr. Stephenson. Um, will you tell me the correct way to pronounce your name? Wilhelmer. The accent's on the first syllable. Wilhelmer. 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 Well, this is as close as I'm going to come, I expect. To William. Um, well, now this raises the whole question of, uh, of food, then. Um, surely, surely there's, there's some, uh, you yourself must have longed for a green vegetable once in a while. Well, I did it first. Uh, I, um, my first experience was that a ship that was supposed to meet me didn't meet me. Mm -hmm. And I had to become a guest of the Eskimos, and for four and a half months, I lived on literally nothing but fish and water. Well, we had some uh, blubber, some uh, polar bear blubber, but apart mm -hmm. from that, 
And at the end of four and a half months, I was healthier than I'd never been before. I and see. enjoying every meal and uh, feeling fine. And this is on an exclusive meat diet. That was exclusive fish in this case. I have since then spent more than six, aggregated more than six years on red meat. That is uh, seal meat, caribou meat, muskox meat, polar bear, grizzly bear, and so on. You have to have fat with a lean. Uh, lean and fat together uh, make a perfect diet. A balanced diet. A balanced diet. Balanced mm -hmm. diet. You have everything you need if you have both lean and fat. In fact, Stone Age men, I think that before the invention of agriculture, which dates back only about 15,000 years, before that, the whole world lived the way Eskimos did. I see. Approximately. Take the French cave art. Uh, the way the uh, artists show the French uh, cave men living 40,000 years ago, that's the way we lived. Yes. Big game. 